What I do remember is, way in, and we go back to the jockey's room, first thing I done was I said to Mick Dipman, I said, bend over. So I kicked him up the arse. So it was unusual where we had a protest fifth against second in the Cox Plate, but there was a short margin between second and fifth. So it wasn't surprising that Simon did lodge an objection because he was firmly of the belief that he would have beaten Let's Elope home had interference not occurred. You put up a strong case in the inquiry room. There's no friends in there. You make a good case for you and your horse and your connections, and you leave it up to the jury to decide, which are the chief stewards. They decided that better lessons up, running was denied, and the protest was upheld. But to this day, I dispute the fact that he was ever going to beat Let's Elope. And I'd actually like to have another crack at that inquiry because I believe that uh, there was never a full gap there for Better Loosen Up to come through. Simon Marshall was desperate and he was pushing through a gap that wasn't entirely there for him. <laughs> we won't hold a grudge. That was 28 years ago. We move on. Superimpose, the mighty Superimpose has taken out the Cox Plate for 92. I really believe that actually superimposed saved the Cox Plate in his own way because it went from despair from everyone, from the putters and everyone else. What's going to happen now? The eight-year-old who'd run second the year before had run second in the Melbourne Cup. He was no slouch. He was a great horse. And he sailed down the outside. But he sort of sealed himself into racing immortality by winning that at eight years of age. That saved the race because it became even a greater event after that. Superimposed deserved it. He was he was a superstar. He deserved it. If Let's Elope had, had, had gone straight and, and won it, she would have deserved it too. Better loosen up. It would have been fantastic to see him. And, and, and he probably was the unlucky one out of it all. This particular day, it didn't come off. It didn't come off. This wouldn't have been the best story of a Cox Plate unless circumstances prevailed the way they did on the day. This is just, just adds to the legend of the race. You look at that stuff, but you've got to park it and move on pretty quick. And as you can tell, after this interview I have, mate, I've forgotten about it. <laughs> if you were viewing the race and assessing how the horses were travelling at the 800 metres, there wasn't a horse travelling any better than naturalism at that stage of the race. He was, put it in Mick Dippen's words later, he was bolting. Who knows what would have happened if Palace Rain had have stayed on its feet and naturalism had have stayed on its feet, we might have seen the best finish of all time. Without the incident at the half mile, I, I feel sure that he would have won on one easy. Just before he fell, if he'd have got room to move, you know, I'd only only wanted, I'd only wanted another, another 50 metres, and I'd have been, I'd have been past Peter Hutchinson from inside me, and then he, there'd been no, no interference. I'd have been gone. And you start to think about like how, how did he fall? What, what happened? And you realise what exactly happened. The horse, somehow, that horse inside is cut something's heels from inside him, got caught up with his inside horse's legs, tipped over sideways and bang it. I went over the top and couldn't get out of the drive. I don't think there was anything spoken in the ambulance. <laughs> and this year, well, <laughs> to say we, we, we just like, they all just fell, fell into one basket. Every superstar over the, over the previous five or six years to all fall in the one basket for the greatest race ever. And I don't think, as I say, we'll, we'll never be, you'll never get a race as good as that ever again. And even though I destroyed it, <laughs> but I'm so, still proud to, to just to, just to be involved with that race. Oh, well, would you call it a highlight? I don't know whether you call it a highlight, but uh, but but to yeah, to be involved in that, to, it's a great talking point. Uh, to to this day, to this day, it's a it's a great talking point. It'll never be forgotten because of the quality of the Cox Plate that year is quite extraordinary. Those horses, like you, you'll never see a Cox Plate again like that. Some horses I'd like to see, without mentioning names champions that have won it before that particular race, would have they? Because there's never been a cox plate like that and there'll never be another one like it. They're off. And superimposed, missed it about a length and a half and away brilliantly here, Kinjate flying from the outside with Coronation Day. Slight chance going up in the centre, naturalism behind him with Palace Rain and here's the filly burst down the outside. She's going forward down to the winning post the first time. Muirfield Village out wide, let's alert back in the centre as they steady with 1,700 to go and Kinjate led now from burst second. 
Coronation Day, third inside, slight chance, fourth a length, Naturalism, fifth on the inside. Outside at Palace Rain, Newfield Village out, four wide around Citizen. Let's Alaith had to check there over on the inside, Mannerism from Prince Salieri. Then came Superimposed, two to better loosen up, and Rough Habit last of all. 1,400 to go on the plate, and Slight Chance took up the running. Slight Chance, the leader now from Kinjate, who comes off the fence. They're followed by Burst and Coronation Day, the rail. Then Palace Rain, fifth, Naturalism running sixth on the inside, Newfield Village out three deep around Citizen. They're followed by Mannerism further back, then Let's Alaith out three deep around the outside of Prince Salieri. Two to Superimposed, third last, second last, and the Cox Plate of the 1,000 metre mark now is better loosen up, and Rough Habit the Kiwi last of all. Kinjate goes up to slight chance at the 900 metre mark, a length and a half burst. Coronation Day getting a nice run, a half away fourth on the rail. Then Palace Ray, Muirfield Village. Naturalism is locked away on the inside now as they start to make their run. The mayor pulls to the outside, lets a labour around Citizen. Mannerism went back to the fence. Old superimposed, peeling to the outside with better loose. And up, there's a fall! There's a fall in the Cox Plate! And Naturalism's lost the rider! Citizen is out of the race and so is Palace Rain. Rough Habit has been knocked out of it now. And as the race to the 500 metre mark now and the leader here is King Jate. Here comes Let's Elope. Let's Elope with a mighty run out wide going up quickly now. King Jate in the middle from Muirfield Village followed by Super and Pose. Let's Elope out wide as race to King Jate. Slight chance fights back down the outside. Super and Pose. Let's Elope in the middle. Prince Salieri getting a run. Better loosen up and Super and Pose. Let's Elope in front. Super Superimposed driving, super! I think super and to let's elope on the Cox plate.